We are delighted to be joined by Wrexham AFC striker, Ollie Palmer. I mean, I'm surprised you've made the time for us, Ollie, given the fact that, you know, you've just been mixing it with the king and that, just the king of England. Yeah, you're lucky I'm snowed in. So um, I've been able to make a little bit of time. So no, it's been a really interesting week, to be fair, at Wrexham. So um, not your usual weekend um, at all, but no. It's uh, it's lovely and it's uh, lovely to be here and I'm glad to make a bit of time. <laughs> Ollie, what was it like to meet the King? Because I believe your dad as well worked with him, right? Yes. Uh, no, it was great. You know, it, I think first and foremost, it's great for the football club. Um, it's obviously fantastic for the documentary um, that the club's involved with, with um, Welcome to Wrexham and, um, you know, a lot of the players and staff were excited to meet the king and yeah for me as well is slightly more special because my dad was his uh, ppo his private protection officer for well he's been working with the royal family for about 25 years so um it was a special day for us both i think that's so nice ollie was your dad really strict when you were growing up <laughs> um yeah i mean i think just yeah, I think you picked up a few things from the royal family, how 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 maybe I'm supposed to eat and things like that. He was quite strict. Um, but I don't think I did him too proud in that because my table manners probably aren't the best. All right, let's get into it then, shall we? Because obviously the, popular, the popularity of Welcome to Wrexham has just been absolutely wonderful to see. And anybody who's seen the show themselves will understand. Has it surprised you how popular it did become? And the people that are no doubt messaging you now who are viewers of the show, you've even got people who weren't following the sport, following the sport and following the team because of it. Yeah, I, th I, I wouldn't say it surprised me that it's done as well as it's done because you've got two massive names in... Um in Welcome to Wrexham. And then on top of that, you've also got Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you've, got... you've been working on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that bit out or I'll get in trouble. No, um, no way. So, yeah, so, uh, you, you know, you've, you've got them two guys that are obviously very much involved. Um, the face of Welcome to Wrexham and, you know, They've been involved with the producing a lot of it. So um, it's gone amazingly well. Um, and yeah, I mean, the support's flooding in worldwide. So it's, it's, you know, it's great for the players, but it's it's great. Again, it's great for the football club. So, you know, it's good to have that support. And um, I think that's what every football club strives for, to have that support network and that reach. And we're probably the lowest ranked club. Um, out of all the clubs that probably have that kind of potential reach, you know, it's it sounds ridiculous, but it's probably the same as what a Premiership club gets, really, in terms of um, volume of support. So it, yeah, it's it's amazing. So it's it's definitely something new to all the players and um, something that we kind of got used to over the last year. But it's good fun. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I've watched the whole thing, obviously, uh, you know, it, it's a show on Hulu of, of, that's obviously part of the Disney family here with ESPN. Here's a question for you, Ali. What, what, you know, what are they like when the cameras aren't filming? Is it because obviously you get the personality and we know how fun they can be, both coming from comic backgrounds. Are they as close and personable with the players and the staff as it appears on the documentary? Yeah, you know. I can't speak any higher about the both of them. Um, I think people probably find it hard to believe, but it, they are they're exactly the same. They, you know, I can only speak for myself, but they've both been unbelievably present, uh, pleasant. Sorry, with with myself and present to be honest. <laughs> yeah. They've exactly. both been, you know, very responsive and um, since I signed, really. Um, always been in communication with, with both of them um if anything they're probably better when the cameras are off mm. they're they're completely themselves um and you go into more private conversations and you get to know each other a little bit better so um it's been great to get to know them but now i kind of look at them yes sometimes you've got to remember that they're your they're your bosses <laughs> yeah. um i probably 
especially with Ryan, I'll probably dive into a few more jokes than what I should do and what most <laughs> normal people with their own bosses. So sometimes I have to rain check myself, but you know, it's great to be able to have them relationships with, 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 with both of them. Um, and I've worked with a lot of, um, different chairmen over the years and, you know, you come across all sorts of people, you know, all of them are wealthy. Some of them are assholes. Some of them are not involved. Some of them just don't care. Um, some some are fine. But right now we've got, you know, two chairmen who are very active, passionate, um, and, and most of all, just really humble and pleasant guys to, to be around. They've got to be happy with you, Ollie. You've been banging the goals in already this season. Are you feeling good? Yeah, no, I'm feeling good. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of pressure to live up to this season. When I came in last season, I scored, I signed at the end of January and I scored 16 goals um, between you know the end of January and, and May. So, I think obviously the expectation is there again from the start. So, I've got 11 goals this season. So, I've carried on like a similar form and it's something you know I've got to continue to end of the season because we've we've got a job to do and that's that's to get this football club promoted. So, you know, put everything aside, you know, the documentary, you know, the famous owners, um the most important thing here is the football club and the fans and what what they deserve and that's to get out of the national league because time and time again I've said it, you know, it's it's a European football club and people of my era I, I never, I wouldn't have even known that if I didn't do my research. But it's a massive football club, mm. uh, used to being in the top leagues, and that's why we have such amazing support. Um, you know, it's a sold out stadium every week, and you know, they're at the moment they're building that back stadium behind the goal because it's um, it's been unsafe for a few years, and you know, it's another great thing that um, the club's been able to do. So once that's all sorted out, it'll be absolutely bouncing. Um, yeah. So it's yeah, it's just a good place to be. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely feel that in the documentary, the way that you say it. And obviously, both Kay and I, you know, as well, growing up in in England, you can feel that, uh, and and Britain, of course, you can feel all that energy. Hey, let's talk about your clothing for a second. Is that hoodie one of yours, Ollie? Yeah. So I thought, uh... <laughs> Kay, Kay tries her best to whistle, and I feel no, like that was don't a give up my stage, oh, Jesus! Look I, at I tried to get some. It was sold out. <laughs> Oh, uh, nice. No, so it's, what? It's, so how's it going? And and how like you know how's it going? I know that it's obviously as well for a good cause. Like, how, what's the what's the overall thinking behind it? Because like Kay said, I tried too. It's all really good stuff. How long have you got? Do you want to know the true story behind it all? Let's bring it. All, all we want is the truth here, Ollie Palmer. Okay, so I when I signed for so I live in London, and mm -hmm. um, when I signed for Wrexham, I was staying in a hotel. Then I was looking for Airbnbs, and then. I was kind of getting fed up a couple months in and I put my social media, if anyone knows any Airbnbs, looking for something a little bit better. And um, a mutual friend from where I am right now, uh, or a mutual acquaintance said, hey, I know someone, they've got an outhouse building. Anyway, long story cut short, I've turned up to this Airbnb thinking they've got a little outhouse building, knocked on the door and they opened the door and said, oh, hi, Ollie, like, it's nice to meet you. Come in, show me around. They show me around the house. And uh, as we're going around, so this is the children's bedroom. They've got two kids. This is the children's bedroom. This is my other child's bedroom. This is their bedroom, the owner's bedroom, right behind me. And then they showed me this bedroom. And I was like, oh, my God, so I'm sleeping next door to the Airbnb bedroom. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> anyway, so I'm thinking about what to do. I'm thinking, how do I get out of here? Um, and they said, you know, oh, can I swear? Yeah, man, do your thing. The, um, we've got great producers that can bleep exactly. all of it out. We've got great so, producers. you know, it was kind of a case of, I was thinking, oh, I don't want to do this. I've, it's quite, you know, I'm in someone else's house. I'm in this random family's home in Rex. This is mental. <laughs> anyway, they invited, invited me to have the roast dinner. And I said, oh, whatever, okay, I'll, I'll have the roast dinner. I was hungry. <laughs> and then Man United was on. So we watched the Man United game. And they said, look, just stay. So this was on the Sunday. So I ended up staying from Sunday to the Tuesday. Got to know the family, lovely people. Um, 
and that was in March and I'm still here now. So it's <laughs> now I'm just a part of the family and one you know during Wh the... whether they like it or not, Ollie, you're yeah, part I'm of just, the family. <laughs> I'm just a part of furniture. So they treat me like a third child and they've been unbelievable. Like, I give a lot of uh, credit for my success to these guys because they've just made me feel at home. It's been like a second family. They couldn't have done any more for me. And they're just like one of the, one of the good people in the world. They're just, you know, just gen genuinely got good hearts. So um, anyway, we're having a dinner one time and uh, the guys that I'm staying with, you know, they said, look, we, we've been thinking, they were all nervous, say, because they you know, didn't want to use me and whatnot. They said, look, we've been thinking about doing like a clothing brand merchandise thing. And there was this like famous photo after a game where I posted a picture of me in my pants. And um, but you don't have that to get up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just in time, Ollie. <laughs> Never underestimate us, Ollie Palmer. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you're killing me. So yeah, from that photo, you know, they uh, Darren said to me, um, well, you know, we could do a Palmer's pants and a I was thinking, absolutely not. I just shut them down like that is not, no chance. Not doing any merchandise, not doing any Palmer's pants crap. And I went away and thought about it. I said, I've always wanted to do a clothing brand. And um, I went back to him with my idea of doing this clothing brand. Um, I want to do a premium line, but I also want to do something more affordable and relatable to the town. So we've got WXM clothing. And then within WXM clothing, there's the 1864 range, and only the 1864 range is out right now because um, the the premium line stuff would take you know it's taken quite a bit longer. That'll be ready in April. Um, so we came up with this brand WXM 1864, um, and the 1864 ranges. This is one of the ranges. So WXM. The same in '64, and there's new designs coming out. You know, there's new designs coming out in the new year, and we've got it in the club shop. The, you know, Ryan and Rob have been unbelievably supportive. They're the first people I went to to say, you know, I've come up with this clothing brand. Um, can I have your permission to do it? Because obviously, can you post that on Insta, please? <laughs> yeah, uh, Ryan already has to be fair to him. Um, so it's yeah they i basically went to them with the idea and they were really supportive and then you know i said look let's get it in the club shop it gives you know fans something different to be able to purchase instead of just you know the standard training gear or or uh football kits um and there was a real demand for it there um and you know it's in a, another retail store called chevron in, in wrexham so yeah it's, it's amazing and we've also done stuff with with wrexham lager and we're trying to collaborate with local brands and we're trying to keep everything, you know, in the Wrexham and especially North Wales. So we're trying to, um, you know, help with the infrastructure and, and the economy in, in Wrexham and North Wales because North Wales is such a beautiful place. And I want to put that on a platform as much as I can. I can't believe more people don't come on holiday in North Wales, honestly. I never even knew about it. It's absolutely stunning. So, yeah, it's just a brand that represents Wrexham and North Wales. And, um, I'm really excited about it and, um, you know, we're learning all the time. We sold out, we launched and sold out straight away and then the, the website crashed and then we sold more stock than what we had and it ended up being a nightmare and people are only still receiving their orders now. Um, so it's been a, it's not been the start that I wanted, but, you know, I think most startups in the first year probably, you know, sell a couple of thousand items. We sold 1,500 units in two three days we were like oh and our website crashed we couldn't even monitor it we couldn't you know um marry up with the warehouse stock and we were like oh my god when we got it all back up and running we were like oh we had to close the website down for you know three weeks then we launched again and then we had a few more hundred orders but everything that's fine and manageable because everything's up and running so um it's been a frustrating start in time i never wanted that to be how my brand would work and i'm you know Darren knows I'm horrible to work with because my standards are high and I'm very fussy. And, um, you know, but now it's got to a point where we've just kind of got our own warehouse. Everything's going to be in-house. We're not using anyone else to do our shipping from January. So we'll be in charge of the shipping. We'll be in charge of the stock. And it will all be under one roof. So although we've made mistakes and we've had to rely on other people, that'll all be 
in house, and you know, to be fair to Dan, my business partner slash second dad, um, <laughs> he's done so much of the work. I, I've not really done a lot. I pick the designs, I pick the clothes, um, and then he just kind of lets me <laughs> oversee things. And I say yes or no to a lot, but he's he's done so much. To be fair to him, um, and he's he's got his own business as well. So he um, he's a graphic designer, and he also works in a in a hospice. So. Again, he's just an amazing human being. Um, and I've probably made his life so much more stressful than what it ever has been. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's it's good. And he, he he's excited. He's, you know, again, he's a resident in Wrexham. And it's something really exciting for him. He's been a season ticket holder of the football club for years. And um, that's the sort of person I'd want to be in partnership with. So, no, it's great. It's all been fun. My, it's It's been... Since signing yeah, for Wrexham, it's, it's had, just been. It's going to be had at the beginning, Ollie. Yeah, and I beat myself it's, it's up a little bit. Will there be a dead bod, Ray? Pardon? Will there be a dead Oh, there it is. Dead bod, Ray. Oh, look at you thinking you're funny. <laughs> we got to put. That's going to be a billboard of the clothing. <laughs> Can you take that down now? <laughs> you're the one that posted it. <laughs> You'll post yeah, it. for my followers, we think you look all great. your followers on ESPN and stuff. <laughs> oh, God. I love it. Love it. Love it. All uh, the last. So Ryan then cropped that photo. Ryan Reynolds cropped that photo and married it up with his Deadpool photo. So all the lads gave me so much stick thinking I planned that. I'd never seen it. So being honest, I haven't really, I hadn't really seen many of Ryan's films before. Obviously, since working with him, I've tried to make an effort to actually watch his film and stuff. But I didn't know that was a Deadpool pose. Nothing. I've got a lot That's of stick great. off that for the lads thinking that I planned that, but that was not planned. No idea. I just right. did it. I just... Greasing up the buses. <laughs> Greasing up the buses. Yeah, I, just did it. I don't know why I did it. I don't know. Ollie, no, obviously, honestly. you've been busy. You've been playing. Have you? Have you? <laughs> Have you, been, have you had a chance to watch the World Cup? Did you see England against France? And if you did, what did you think? Um, I don't think we created enough to win the game anyway. Um, I think France took their chance as well. Um, I don't think we made enough clear-cut chances. Yes, we're a good team, but being good doesn't make you World Cup champions. Um, Bit, a bit frustrated. I feel sorry for Harry Kane. He's such a top quality striker and, you know, people do miss penalties. For me, you should be hitting the target from, you know, from the penalty spot and if the keeper saves it, so be it. Um, I can take someone missing a penalty when they hit the target, but yeah, it happens. So, again, a bit gutted. I've seen that Saka's got a lot of abuse for his performance. I thought he was the best player. That's from obviously all the media in England, but I don't, I don't get it. I don't get where they get their information. I don't know if they're watching the games or I have no idea. So um, yeah, it was frustrating to go out. Cause obviously, it was you know getting my enjoyment at home and um, watching the World Cup. But I think there's been so many great games. There's been so many great games. Uh, it's you know for a World Cup, to sit indoors and be able to watch so many games um it's made it enjoyable because i think when you're out with the lads watching world cup games you don't actually focus on them so it's been been a winter world cup to stay in and enjoy um but hopefully the, for forever going onwards that they'll always be in the summer because it's so much better in the summer <laughs> yeah. who's winning it for you um portugal <laughs> They're not even in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you weren't going to be coming. I think don't. Argentina. Ollie, well, this is what we do for a living. You think you? I know. <laughs> How many stats have you got up in front of you? <laughs> but you were looking around thinking. Then, I that, was thinking. I was right? thinking. <laughs> is is Ollie this cheeky or is he this? Um, uh, no. Nah, <laughs> I think. I would like. I really wanted. I did really want. If England weren't going to be, I really wanted a Portugal Argentina final. Just the two goats. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for me, probably I would probably have to go with Argentina now just to see Messi live the World Cup. Just to he, just as a human being, player, 
icon. He just deserves it. Him or Ronaldo need to win it. It's just so unjust if they don't. Um, I don't know if they will, though. Um, I think France will have a big say in that. But, um, yeah, I'll probably be rooting for Argentina from now on. It's, it sounds as though you can't be drawn between the two. Messi and Ronaldo, it's the eternal question in football. You said the two goats. Many are saying that if Messi does win the World Cup, that settles the argument. Where do you stand on it? I feel like, so Ronaldo's my goat. Ronaldo's my number one. Um, they are two, People make points about them both. They are two. I think it just comes down to favoritism. Like you like apples, I like bananas. I think that's how people that you could you could argue until you're blue in the face. It's it's pointless. It just comes down to personal preference. I was a Real Madrid fan over Barcelona. I don't know how people make them choices in England. You, you know, in El Clasico is this Real Madrid or Barca. I would just love Real Madrid. So that's the way I've always gone. I'm a Ronaldo fan over Messi. Um, two completely different players, but. I know they're both as good as each other and they've, you know, the stats are just absolutely mental. Um, yeah, so for me, Ronaldo, and I think it's just done on favouritism. And I think a lot, of, Ronaldo gets a lot of bad press, you know, like, you know, Messi after the game kind of pushing the, um, who was it? Who did Argentina knock out in the last game? Netherlands. Huh? Who did Argentina knock out last? The Netherlands. Yeah. Netherlands with that bit with all the feist in the penalty yeah, the shootout. Yeah, so when they knocked out the Netherlands and Messi's doing his interview after and he's kind of shooing the player away and that was Ronaldo. He'd be getting absolutely obliterated, like obliterated about his attitude and stuff. Messi can just gets away with stuff like that and that really annoys me. Um, to be fair, but, he hardly ever does that. Messi's so that, done loads of stuff. Like that was a that was a Messi, weird one. For him nah, to do. Messi's <laughs> Messi's shut down loads of players. Like Messi's done many things like that, but you know Ronaldo. I just feel like because he's a lot more ego driven on the public eye, and he'll come out and he say that he's good looking, and he comes out and he says I am the best in the world. A lot of people instantly just take a dislike into him. Um, you know has. Ronaldo's the only one walking around shaking everyone's hand whilst crying um, after they've been knocked out. Does he get any like press about that? No, you just see, you just see like natural footage from fans' cameras seeing him doing that. No one else is doing that, and that doesn't get picked up on. But obviously, press. I don't know if you guys come under press, but press generally only report <laughs> bad things because that gives you clickbait, right? So. Um, <laughs> You know, we still look at Ronaldo as being lovely to all the players. He's been a good sportsman. It doesn't, but then you know, on the flip side, Messi should have got a lot more stick for being disrespectful to the player, trying to shake his hand after a game. So, but whatever, I'm a Ronaldo fan, so it's, it's what it is. 